So today I'm going to start my session with uh, the discussion of a sampling distribution. As you can see over here, the heading is sampling distribution. In the morning session, which I took with CSC section A, I discussed uh, percentile with respect to the normal random variable. And to be very brief, percentile actually a kind of probability. It is not percentage, it is a kind of probability. Now, there, there, are, there are two types of probability which we can consider. One probability is uh, when we consider a number Z alpha without any less of, loss of generality, if we consider the Z alpha to be positive, then we can consider the region to the right of Z alpha and the region to the left of Z alpha. Now, which I didn't mention in the morning session is this. It is not always that Z alpha is considered on the right hand side. Even you can consider a graph like this, where this is Z equal to zero, and you can consider your Z alpha to be to, on the left hand side of that, also of this point origin also. Now that can also be considered. Don't think that Z alpha will be always on the positive side. Z alpha if lies on the positive side, it is a positive quantity. And if it lies in the negative side, it is a negative quantity. On both the cases, in both the cases, we can consider two probabilities associated with that. One probability, which is associated with the right hand side of Z alpha, or if you consider this figure, it is the probability associated with this end. And another probability which we can consider is the negative side of Z alpha, uh, sorry, the left-hand side of Z alpha. According to this figure, I'm considering this probability or according to that figure, I'm considering this probability. So two different regions can be considered. One region is probability of Z greater than Z alpha. This is one probability. And another probability subsequently can be obtained, which is probability of Z less than Z alpha, which obviously is one minus alpha. Now, percentile is simply 100 multiplied by one minus alpha. That is called the percentile. I'm, I'm being very brief because I explained these things in the morning session. Okay, so this is called the percentile of the random variable, normal random variable associated with the situation, the system. I'm going to erase this. Now my current discussion is not on percentile, but on something else, which is obviously associated with percentile, because this is the stage at which the important portions of our syllabus has begun. Now, I shouldn't say like this because uh, all these conditional probabilities, Bayes theorem, axiomatic approach, all these things are important. But what I mean to say is that these percentiles and the current topic which are discussing with since yesterday will be required again and again in the subsequent section of your syllabus. Okay. Our present topic is uh, sampling distribution. <clears throat> and we shall understand what this sampling distribution is with respect to the given problem. So let us try to understand the problem which is highlighted over here. If we select a sample from a population, what would be the expectation and variance of the sample mean? Okay, first, first of all, you try to understand uh, the question. Population, what is population? Population is a kind of collection which practically can exist or hypothetically can exist. By hypothetical population, we, I mean, say for example, let us uh, set one example hy for hypothetical population, first of all. If you say like this, that let us consider that we are going to toss a die one lakh times, one lakh times, or one million times, one million is 10 lakhs, what will be such and such things. 
Now, no sane person is going to do this kind of experiment. Okay. So it's not possible. It's not humanly possible. We can hypothetically keep on increasing the number of experiments performed on a certain system. Now, that size of the population which you are considering, now 1 million is obviously a finite number because it is countable. It starts from one and ends at 1 million, but it is not humanly possible. So although it is a finite, but it is not possible. So it is an example of a finite population, which is hypothetical. Now, if you ask me that if I toss a coin 1 million times, what will be such and such things? Since it is not possible for me to do the experiment, what I'll do, I'll take a coin, hypothetically assumed to be unbiased, and I can take some pain and throw it, say, 500 times. That I can do. Now, the 500, this particular set, 500, containing 500 tosses, will not be considered as population. I am doing this because I want to justify the fact with respect to 1 million times tossing of the coin. So in this case, with respect to 1 million, 500 times tossing is the sample. With respect to 500 times 1 million uh, tossing is the population, but 1 million tossing is the hypothetical population. What is practical population? Practical population is let us consider the current scenario. The current scenario talks about the number of persons affected by the COVID-19 uh, virus. Let us consider the population of West Bengal. Obviously, population of West Bengal, achha, there you have to understand one particular thing, that this population, that you, when you talk about a population, this population is actually a relative matter. Because first of all, you have to understand what is our point of study or what is our domain of study? With respect to that, we keep on changing our population. Suppose I'm interested about the number of COVID affected people in Kolkata. Then in that scenario, we can consider the population of West Bengal, which is obviously finite to be the, 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 the population under consideration. And the, uh, the collection of people living in Kolkata as a sample. Now, if I'm interested about the population of, uh, of the, if I'm interested about the COVID affected people of West Bengal, then in that, in that scenario, the West Bengal will be my sample and maybe the uh, collection of people living in India will be my population, which is obviously finite. If I'm interested about the COVID affected people of India, I can consider as a population the COVID affected people of Asia. In, if I'm interested about the COVID affected people in Middle, uh, Middle East Asia or South Asia, I can consider the population to be the world, the entire world where COVID affected people uh, are there. Hmm. Now, this uh, studying each and every people of the world, each and every people of the world is not possible for us. Although it is finite, it is not possible because it is monetarily not possible. It is, we do not have that much time to do. We do not have that much manpower to do. So what I can say that it is practical. Population is existing, not like uh, tossing of a uh, coin 1 million times is existing. But if you ask any government, what is the current scenario of the COVID affected people in the world? Any sane people will say, with respect to our current situation, that I think 98% of the population is COVID affected. Now he is giving you an, a hypothetical uh, presumption of this, which is not, which is to be tested. Okay hypothetical assumption on the basis of a population which is practical. So population can be, uh, uh, population is a relative matter and it is 
defined with respect to the situation under consideration. Population is not always the population of humans, population of animals, or population of living things. Population can be population of, this population can be of a population of non-living thing, things also. Uh, we can consider a population of books, we can consider a population of stars, we can con consider a population of galaxies, we can consider a population of bacteria, virus, anything. So that is the uh, that is what actually population is, and since population is population study is not possible, so we go for sample study, and we do this study to draw some kind of conclusion regarding the population, regarding the population from which the sample has been drawn. That thing will be how it is done. That thing will be discussed later part in our syllabus. But first of all, we have to understand what sampling distribution is. Sampling distribution is always a kind, is also a kind of probability distribution. Now, don't ask me whether it is discrete or continuous. Depending on the situation, it can be discrete or it can be continuous. But sampling distribution, if you ask me what it is, I, I, I say that it is a distribution, a probability distribution associated to the sample drawn from a certain population, which may be finite or may be infinite. I have not written all these things in the note. My note is concise, but you just listen to me and feel it. And you can later get these definitions from any book, more beautifully written than I'm saying. So, a sampling distribution is a distribution. A sampling distribution is a probability distribution, discrete or continuous, as the case may be, which the sample is following, and the sample has been drawn from a certain population. Now, if we select, they're asking that if we select a sample, sample from a population, what would be the expectation and gradients of the sample mean? Now, when we consider a sample, when we take a sample, immediately after that, we actually try to calculate the sample mean. And we try to calculate the sample variance. Why we do we calculate sample mean? Why not median and mode? Because, because uh, although there are several types of measures of central tendency, like we can calculate mean, median, mode, harmonic mean, geometric mean, average is easy to calculate and mostly use, used. Variance is the best measure of uh, dispersion. So immediately after getting a sample, we calculate the uh, sample mean and the variance. The sample mean is actually, uh, you can say that uh, suppose we have a sample uh, whose uh, the mother variable of which is capital X. So sample mean will be represented by X bar. Now, carefully observe that if we consider a sample whose mother variable is capital X, then sample mean will be, sample mean will be X bar and Variance, sample mean of what? I should write it. Sample mean of what is X bar? Sample mean of X, this mother variable is X bar. Variance of X is, uh, say sigma, whatever. Now what they are asking, they are asking you to find the expectation of this sample mean. Now they are treating, originally the variable was X. Now they have got a new variable, which is X bar. Now they are telling, they are asking us to find what will be the expectation of X bar. Actually, we are calculating, we are going to calculate mean of mean of X. And also we are going to calculate variance of X bar. So this, has to be found 
This is the question they have asked. How these sample mean and variance is distributed and what are their expectation and variance? This is the question. So to understand this particular example, let us consider a situation where we select a sample of size two. Carefully listen to me and uh, uh, look at the screen. We select a sample of size two from a population whose values are equally likely to be either one or two. Okay. We select a sample of size two from a population whose values are equally likely to be either one or two. Now we have to be on safe side. We have said that this drawing of sample will be equally likely for the sake of our study. This particular note, which I'm presenting right now, it is not the proof of the given problem. It is the explanation of the given problem. So don't think that I'm giving you the proof. Proof is not required, just I'm explaining what is happening. So I'm going to draw a sample of size two from a population whose values can be either one or two. And you can draw the sample with equal probability. Let X be the random variable denoting the member of the population. Now, according to our assumption, this capital X can take value one with probability half and this X can take value two with probability half. Now we know that by definition, the population mean, population mean will be denoted by EX. The population mean will be denoted by EX. And <clears throat> this EX can be calculated. This EX can be calculated as as you know that expectations are always calculated by the given formula. Just a minute. EX or discrete case, it is summation X, X into probability of X equal to small x. So we have applied this formula over here. So you see the possible values are one, and their respective probabilities are half. So expectation of X can be found as one into probability of X equal to one plus two into probability of X equal to two. Now expectation of X will be one plus one into half plus two into half, which is 1.5. So we have actually found since capital X our, is our population random variable. So we have actually found the population mean now. Let us note it down somewhere in our copy. So population mean has been calculated to be 1.5. Similarly, population variance can be found by the formula. As you know, the variance formula is given as V of X is given by E of X square minus E X whole square. So we have, first of all, we have found E X square, which is one square into probability of that X takes the value one plus two square into probability that X takes the value two. And then after that, we are going to calculate EX squared as one into half plus four into half, which is 2.5. And then by substituting these values of EX squared and by squaring the value of EX and subtracting one from the other, we are getting the variance of the population or population variance as 0 0.25. Let us note it. Let us note these two figures somewhere in our copy. So population mean and population variance are found. They have not been, for our current scenario, this is the population is uh, actually, uh, I, we, can, we can hold, get hold of the population because it is finite. But in actual scenario, often they are hypothesized. So you note down these two figures somewhere. Now, to obtain the probability distribution of the sample mean. Now, you see, if capital X is the random variable associated with the population, this, uh, and we can get, 
we can get a sample of size two. The suppose suppose one of the variables associated to the first sample is x one, and another variable associated with the second sample is x two. These are also the random variables. X one is the random variable associated with the first sample. X two is the random variable associated with the second sample. Then the sample mean will be x one plus x two by two. We note that the pair of values x one and x two can assume any four possible pairs of the values from the population. Now population, but what can this value capital X and can take? The value capital X uh, capital X can take these two values. X can take either one, or X can take two. Now, since we are actually going to get a sample of size two, so we can get four pairs. So, first pair is one one. Both of the random variables are taking the for, taking the value one. Then both of the random variables are taking the value two. And in between, one variable is taking one, and another variable is taking two. So, in this way, we can get a sample of size four. Now, by the independence, by the independence of x one and x two, it is obvious that each of these pairs has probabilities one by four. Because what do we mean by the independence? Because uh, this drawing of one sample, the drawing of one sample that X one is taking the value one is independent of what X two is taking, or the vice versa, and they are also equally likely with respect to our previous assumption. So all these samples which have been drawn one 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 two two one two two, all these will have one uh, probability one by four because we have assumed they are all equally likely. Let us now form the probability distribution table of the sample mean X bar. Now we have calculated x bar. We know the formula of calculating x bar is this. We are going to calculate the probability distribution table for the random variable x bar, not for the random variable x. We know already that formula formation of uh, probability distribution for a random variable is nothing but to associate certain values to the random variable. And the associated probabilities. So we have to have the values of the random variable along with their probabilities. That is called the probability chart. We are going to find the discrete probability chart in this case. First of all, you have to you are going to calculate the probability. Uh, sorry, the values of the random variable. But your random variable is capital X bar. Keep it in mind. The possible values of X bar will then be one plus one by two, which is uh, one. One plus two by two, which is one point five. One two plus one by two, which is one point five, and two plus two by two, which is two. So one, one point five, one point five, and two. These are the four possible values of the random variable x bar. Okay. And there are probabilities since they are equally likely. Each of these random variables, each of these values will have probabilities one by four, one by four, one by four, one by. Four. Because of our assumption, they are assumption that they are equally probable. So we have got our probability chart. So let us write it somewhere, for the sake of your understanding. So we have got x bar as one, one point five, one point five, and two, and probability of x bar is equal to small x bar, which is. One by four, one by four, one by four, and one by four. And you know how to calculate e of x bar. Now, see, it is pretty obvious. I have also shown, I have also shown here that how these one by fours are obtained. Uh, you can oh one one thing. This probability of x bar, since these two values are actually same, is this since these values are actually same, so. And in a collection, we do not repeat the same value. So you can, what you can do, you can consider one value, one point five, because it is the. I cannot consider in a set two 
same values because set is a collection of distinct values. So actually X bar has one, 1.5 and two, but 1.5 1. 1. can occur in how many ways? It can occur either in two ways with probabilities one by four. So probability of one, getting one, 1. 1.5 is actually this half. So my values of X bar are one, 1. 1.5 and two, and their respective probabilities are one by four, half and one by four. Now we are going to calculate, now we are going to calculate the expectation of this random variable. Now expectation of X bar will be value one multiplied by its probability one by four plus value 1.5 multiplied by its probability half plus value two multiplied by its probability one fourth, which is 1.5. Expectation of X bar squared value squared multiplied by its probability one by four value squared multiplied by probability half, value squared multiplied by the probability one fourth, which is 2.375. And variance of X bar, since variance of X is EX squared minus EX whole squared, variance of X bar will be EX bar squared minus EX bar whole squared. So we substitute all these values calculated and we get 0.125. Now you see one thing very interesting is that interesting to note that initially we calculated EX, which is the population mean. Carefully observe. And I asked, asked you to uh, note down the value somewhere in your copy. The population mean came out to be 1.5. This is what? This is the average of the sample mean. Isn't it? So I'm writing it as average of the sample mean. Now you see in this calculation, both of these values are actually same, 1.5. So average of the sample mean is exactly equal to the population mean. Or you can say if the population mean, if you consider the population mean to be mu and you consider the sample mean to be X bar, then expectation of X bar is coming out to be mu or expectation of sample mean is equal to the population mean. This formula this is, this is a very wonderful result in statistics and very basic and fundamental, fundamental result in sampling distribution, which is very useful and it's great result and uh, it's the most important result I must say. So what you are doing over here is that, okay, let us finish the problem first of all. What about variance? Carefully observe, you calculated the variance X to be, it, it came out to be, 1.125. Oh uh, no, it came out to be, what was the value of the variance? Let us see, just let us, let me check. The value of the variance of X was 0.25. Yeah, 0.25. Now, variance of X is not directly equal to the variance of X bar, but when you, are actually dividing the variance of X by the sample size, which is two, then they, the two values are same actually. Look at this. So if variance of X is equal to Sigma, sample size is N, sample size you are getting is N, then variance of X bar, Variance of sample mean equal to population variance divided by sample size. These two results are very important results and we can, 
we can assimilate these two results in a theorem which is very important and we are going to read this theorem from below the theorem says the theorem has a special name it is called this theorem is called okay let us first of okay this theorem do not doesn't have any name this theorem is actually has no name it is the ultimate assimilated result of what we have got for a particular specific problem the theorem says if capital x is the random variable associated with the population and ex or or mu is the population mean while bx or sigma square be the population variance then ex bar equal to mu and bx bar equal to sigma square by n where n is the size of the sample now this population this particular theorem doesn't have any meaning what this theorem is uh, uh, this particular theorem doesn't have any name sorry but what this theorem is saying is that what is actually what actually we are doing to get a best result i mean population is not a, a thing which is which you cannot even if it is practical you cannot study if a population is there you want to calculate the population mean suppose average number of persons affected by the covid 19 virus in all over the world this value suppose we do not know the value how they can say that this percentage of people can be affected what is the uh, 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 trick trick over here okay what is the average number of persons affected by covid 19 all over the world so what to answer this question they are actually using this particular formula ex bar equal to mu what they are doing they are designating certain samples x1 be the same suppose x1 is the sample of canada or england say x2 is the sample of italy x3 is the sample of a part of china x4 is the sample of japan x5 is the sample of india they are collecting these samples and in the sample they are by software or by software definitely they are collecting data and they are calculating the average number of persons affected in india japan some parts of china italy england canada and australia maybe so they are actually covering entire and and and, and israel and iraq so they, in this way they are connect, actually covering the entire continent all the continents at a time together and they have they are calculating the, their average average number of people affected there in these different parts of the continent then they are taking the average of these averages and they are saying that the number average number of people affected by covid 19 in the all over the world is this okay they are not calculating the they are not studying the population they are studying samples di at different points of time again and again and they are calculating the average of averages so this is a very wonderful theorem and often we say that x bar that is the sample mean is the you note it down in your copy because it is not written in the note is the point estimator is the point estimator of population mean population mean mu x bar is the point estimator of the population mean mu okay and therefore this result is very important also 
it is to be noted that that suppose you have drawn a sample you have drawn a sample where e x bar is equal to mu indeed now you never know whether it is indeed true or not because you can only say that yeah it is i am saying that e expectation of x bar equal to mu expectation of x bar x bar is point estimating the population mean but you do not know the actual scenario but suppose this is the fact we indeed for the uh, for our for the situation expectation of x bar is indeed mu we may not know this but suppose it is indeed new then if it is so such a sample that you have drawn is called unbiased sample such a sample is called unbiased sample so this is the meaning of unbiasedness when we say that a coin is unbiased that means what will be the probability of getting head 10 consecutive heads in uh, 9 million throws so we consider different sets of 10 throws we calculate probabilities 50 times and then we are, we are saying that that is the scenario of the population and sub if this is the thing and we never know this because we we, we cannot know this because otherwise we could have studied the population itself then our situation is actually unbiased our coin is unbiased our dice is unbiased and so and so so that is the meaning of unbiasedness mathematically i have introduced unbiasedness first time in the class and this theorem which i have we have written over here this theorem can be generalized further by the name of central limit theorem which goes like this so let us read the statement of central limit theorem and let us conclude the first session of today's class the central limit theorem says that just a minute it is saying that let capital x1 capital x2 capital xn be the sample from a population having mean expectation of xi equal to mu for all i okay just a minute i am stopping my recording right now because uh, less than 1 minute is there we are going to study central limit theorem in the next session okay so let us stop for now because the session will suddenly end